Let me just talk to you real quick about spiritual warfare, right? It's amazing, spiritual warfare, right? Spiritual warfare is, is, is Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy is chapter 7 and 8, right? I'm just going to talk to you quick. 7 and 8 is a powerful, very powerful, two, two powerful chapters, right? Because a lot of times we think that the devil, has, the devil has leverage over us, right? We think that the devil is winning, right? A lot of times, oh, the devil is winning. I, have, I pray, I pray, I fast it. Don't manifest yet. Hold, hold it, hold it. Let me finish so, so we think that the devil is winning because we see things with the natural eyes, right? We see things with the natural eyes. We think the devil is winning because we don't see the day of light. We don't see what's going on. So I'm going to prove to you the devil don't win. I'm going to prove to you in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 8, Jesus wins. Amen? I'm going to show you how awesome God is in those two chapters. That's the two spiritual warfare chapters are the best spiritual warfare chapter in the whole entire Bible. You with me? I'm going to show you how God takes care of business against the devil. We know that, 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 we know that the, the chapter, the, the, Exodus is, the Exodus is one of the most important chapters for Israel, right? They were, living, they were living Egypt, right? Same thing for you. That was a chapter that belongs to you when you were living the world. Yes? Or are you still in the world? When you were living the world, that's what you were doing in Exodus, Amen? Because you were coming from the, you were living the world, coming to the cross. Right? You were living the world, the clubs, the drinking, the hanging out, the sleeping around, the lying about, the cheating about. You were living that world, and you were coming to a supernatural world. So you were doing an exodus, right? So in chapter 7, it's an amazing chapter because, you know, the, we know the story, right? The devil, we know the story in chapter 7, right? In chapter 7, we understand. In chapter 7, we understand how, the, how Moses went up. How Moses went up, and he, he went up, and he told Pharaoh, let my people go, right? You remember that? Right? It's amazing. I went to, I preached in some, some, some church. It was crazy. I asked this question. Who had been in jail? All the church. It was like 400 people raised their hand. And the pastor, everybody went to jail. I was like, whoa, what's going on? Let my people go. <laughs> so it was amazing, right? So in chapter 7, listen, it's, it's, it's an incredible showdown in chapter 7. We know the story, right? And I want you to catch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to highlight some words for you. In chapter 7, we know the story, right? Moses and Aaron show up to the fight, right? Now it's Moses and Aaron and God against Pharaoh, the devil, and the magicians. You hear me? Against the magician. Now it's a showdown. Now it's a fight. The fight is on. You can't back out. Now you got Moses. You got crazy Aaron. You got God, and then you got the magicians. You got Pharaoh representing the devil. Moses represents God, right? Pharaoh represents the devil. You got the devil. You got the magicians. What happened in the fight? Drop. They drop it like it's hot. Drop it down. The first round starts. Drop it down, right? The serpent, right? Remember that? And then he dropped the staff down and turns into a serpent, right? What the magicians do? Pharaoh called the magician, the sorcerers, the art worker. He called them up to the scene. He said, do your stuff. Bang, they drop it too. Do the same thing. Now it's one on one. It's an even fight. So Pharaoh say, yeah, I'm not impressed. My devil worshippers could do the same thing. You get it so far? The devil will show up and say, I can do the same thing God can do. Drop, he dropped the staff. What happens? The magicians and the sorcerers, they drop their staff. And do the same thing. Now what happens next? Okay. The, the Lord said, stretch out your hand. Touch the waters. Remember that? Touch the water. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out the staff and touch the water. What happened? It turns into blood. Remember that? It turns into blood. Pharaoh said, yeah. Psh, you didn't show me nothing. Let me show you what I got. He called Julio. He called Juan. What they do? They do the same thing. Touch the waters. Turn into blood. Now it's two and two. You, sir, you with me so far? Two and two. See, the devil, same way. Christianity. You win one round, the devil wins one. You win, now you're thinking that the devil is strong as the devil is just as strong as God is. You start thinking that. So what happens in the third fight? What the third fight is? He says, stretch the staff, hit the thing, hit the waters. And frogs came out. Remember that? And Pharaoh and the magicians, they stand there and look at the whole situation. And then Pharaoh said, go ahead. They do the same thing. Now it's three on three. 
And this is what happened in Christianity. When we're in the fight, when we're in the battle, the devil shows up and he tries to convince you that he's just as powerful as God. Hold on. Hold on. Give me, hold on. Amen, John. Let me amen myself on that because you're a bunch of sleepy here. Let me amen myself on that. So, but God is God. And God is not created. And God never had a birth certificate. So when they told me Obama had one, I couldn't believe it. Because <laughs> everything that's created has a birth certificate. So, so, so now God said, okay, let me show you who I am. Now you with me? Let me show you who I am. God said, let me show you. He told Moses and Aaron, strike the dust of the earth. And then strike the dust of the earth. And he, he take dirt and turn them into gnats. Let me say it again. Can I say it in Spanish? He strike the earth. He turned dust, nothing, into gnats, into bugs. He takes earth. He takes dust. He takes dirt and turn them into bugs. He take dirt, he put wings on them, he put eyes on them, he put antennas on them, he put a DNA on them, he put respiratory system on them, he put everything on them, and he said, now show me if you can do that. And then the magicians tried, and they couldn't do it. They turned over to Pharaoh and said, this must be the finger of God. Amen. This must be the finger of God. Because we can't do it. Because God can turn something, nothing into something. God will always be God. And the Bible says he will never be mocked. And the, magic, the magicians had to put away their tricks, their trays, and their sorceries. Because in the fourth round, Jesus had a knockout. But this... I, 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 listen, so the Pharaoh, Pharaoh understands all this, right? So now Pharaoh knows, Pharaoh knows, listen, Pharaoh knows, Pharaoh knows, listen, Pharaoh knows. Let me get to this part. Pharaoh knows he can't beat God now. Pharaoh knows he can't beat God. So he understands one thing. He can't beat God, but now he knows he can come after you. I can't be God, but if I can be God to you, because a lot of Christians are defeating foes, and God loses because we don't represent them the way we should. We don't stand up and believe that he is God, and he can do anything. So Pharaoh and knows, I can't beat their God, but I can go after them. And this is the, these are the words that the devil uses on, on Christians. I'm going to give you the words that he uses. See, God called you to be a great white, but you look like Mimo. Because the devil used confinement, boundaries, restrictions on you. In other words, the devil says, you can go so far, like he told in chapter 8, Deuteronomy, you can go so far and worship your God, but you're still in Egypt. Egypt is a stronghold. In other words, the devil tells you, you can go so far, you can go to church, but you're still in shackles. You can read your Bible, but you're still in shackles. You can worship God, but I still have you in shackles. And Christians come to church, clang, 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 clang. Because you come to worship, you read your Bible, you spend time with God. You come to the house of God, but you're still incarcerated. It's okay. I'm preaching to myself. Because the devil knows how to control your spiritual environment. When you should be living in the holies of holies with Christ. Because you should be saying to yourself, I seen too much in Jesus to doubt this devil that's in front of me today. You should be saying that. So the devil used restriction, right? So what the devil do? The devil knows one thing. He knows he wants to restrict your freedom. 
by restricting your faith. If I can take your faith, I can discredit God. You see what I'm saying? So when I came against Christians, they, they kept talking to me, and it was a spiritual battle by words. When I was BC before Christ, I knew how to incarcerate the words and take the words of life that they had and turn them into question marks. I wish you would try that with me now that I'm in Christ. <laughs> I wish you would. I would open up a can of whipping the words. That's why when I confront demonic wor devil worshipers, I shock them. I don't act like a Christian. I don't say, Jesus loves you. The Bible told me so. I saw Psalms 91. You want it now? <laughs> and then, I, then, because you see, I, I, live, I live in Psalms 23 1. Psalms 23 1 is, is my life. It should be your life too. It should be your life. It should be your, your life. You know what Psalms 21, I mean, Psalms 23 1 means? You know what that means? The Lord is my what? You know what that says? The Lord is my what? Come on. It's English, Spanish. Say it. Say it loud. The Lord is what? Say it again. No. We got off the little bus. A bunch of retards in the back. Say it completely. The Lord is my shepherd. You're telling the devil, I'm in agreement with him. I'm in relationship with him. You can't move me. You can't do nothing to me because I am in relationship with him. He owns everything. I'm about him. I'm about nothing else. He is my all in all. He's my everything. The Lord is my shepherd. That means I don't like anything in my life. I should not want. I lack nothing in my life because he's holding the pen of my story, devil. Even your whiteout can't help you. But that's good. That's good right there. So, so the devil understands. Listen, listen to the words. The devil knows he's trying to, because if the devil can take your freedom, he'll make you a mediocre Christian. You get it? He'll make you a mediocre Christian. Mediocre Christianity, you look like them, you walk like them, you act like them. You'll become a copycat and a bootleg, but you'll never you'll be a great original. And that's what we got today in the churches. Many means all over the place. No one's stepping out the boat. Because what you should, what's drowning you, you should be walking on it. See, that's what's going on. Because if I can mess with your boundaries, okay, that means your boundary, your spiritual boundary. If I can lock a spiritual boundary, you can only go so far in Christ. And that's what the devil did to the Israelites. I got boundaries on you. You can go worship, but you can't go so far. You're still in Egypt. In other words, you're still in bondage. You got the chains on. Yeah, go to church. Yeah, go to Bible study. Yeah, go worship. Yeah, go read your Bible. But I still own the key of your chains. And many Christians are in chain. See that? The restriction. Restriction your fate, right? Confinement. He confined your thinking. Your thought, he confined how you see God. He puts you in a box. God never, call, God never called you to be in a box. God called you to be out of the box. Because God never, God never put himself in a box. You know, the only, thing, the only crazy thing I know, God is small enough to fit in my heart, but he's big enough to cover the universe, baby. God never called. When God was born, he was born, outside of the, he was born outside of the hospital. He was born outside of the system. He was born in the major. He didn't want to be born in the system. He was born outside. And when God died, he, got, he died outside of the city, high and wide. Why? Because he died outside of the system. But you're living for the system. COVID-19, did you get the shot? Did you get the booster? Woo -woo. Black Lives Matter. Don't get black. Don't be upset with black people with me. I'm more black than you. Every life matter. Every person matter. I understand this. I understand the, the abuse of police because I got beat up a lot of time. You look at the police in New York City back in the 70s, you, back in the 80s, the racist, I get that part. But you know what? You know what black and black matters to me? When we go to Baltimore, Chicago, and we start black and black crime, we stop that crap, then it matters to me. So you don't want to hear that. Right? I don't believe in, 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 in situation. Every life is the same. 
to me. I don't, I don't believe it. I'm not going to vote for Ricky Martin. He's my president. No, he's not. He's homosexual. He ain't my president. I vote according to the word of God. I vote because I have to be responsible later. God's going to hold me responsible. Why did you vote for that person? They believe in homosexuality. They believe in abortion. They believe in killing babies. They believe in sex trafficking, human trafficking. Why did you cast your lot to that? I'd rather not vote. I'm not going to. And people say, oh, I, I, don't like Don, oh yo, I don't like Donald Trump. Well, he don't like you either. Oh, you talk funny. Well, you talk funny too. I don't care who's in the White House. My, my, and this isn't a politician thing. This is a devil thing. How the devil schemes you and how the devil uses you to advance his kingdom on the earth when you vote for the wrong thing. Okay? I'd rather not vote and, and, and be neutral than vote for something that's going to advance the devil's agenda. Okay, it's not a politician because I don't care if it's right, right wing, left wing. It's the same stupid bird. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. I don't need a president. I got a king. Amen. I don't need a president, baby. I got a king, King Jesus. You think I'm going to panic? People are going to do this and do that? Listen, I'm supposed to die one day. I'm cool with that. I got a hill, I got a mansion on a hill, baby. Right across the street from Hallelujah Boulevard. You go down, you keep go down, you bypass Paul's house, you know, you keep going down the trail, and when you look up in the hill, you see my house up there. I got angels right now cutting the grass. I'm living for that. I ain't living. You think that I'm gonna worry about Ricky Martin being president? Ricky's a good looking dude. I mean, if I was half looking, he was. Because Rick is like a good-looking Puerto Rican. I mean, really good-looking. Seriously, he is. And the brother can sing. The brother can dance. But when he finished dancing, all a bunch of feathers all over the place. <laughs> Vote for him. Menudo messed him up. Be wise, Christian. Be gentle as a dove. Be wise as a serpent. Don't let the devil take advantage of you. The Bible, Cor Cor Corinthians says it. To watch the schemes in the wild, the devices of the devil. Be smart against those devices. Whether here on the earth, when they're in your job, whether they're in your house, wherever you are, be wise. Be wise. Be wise. God has given us wisdom and knowledge. God has given us an anointing. We are special, peculiar people that God has picked. Don't get sucked into a system, don't get sucked in, into a, 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 a movement. The only movement I know is the movement of the cross. Amen. That's the only movement I know. I ain't going to vote. I'm not going to agree unless Christ is in it. Understand? Unless Christ is in it. I did my debauchery. I did all that stuff. I went to everywhere. You can, I went to every crazy club in New York City. You can, man, I'm crazy. I did my cor uh, Corona is the best beer, by the way. Just promoting that. Just wanted to promote that. But I don't do those things anymore. Because when I thought like a child... I reason like a child. Now I'm a grown up in Christ. Understand? I'm not going to be the devil's pawn in the chess game. I'm going to stand for Christ no matter what. I preach the gospel. I preach truth. And people sometimes don't like it. You know why they don't like it? They're probably, oh, he's racist. I'm not racist. I grew up in the projects. If I was to be racist, I'd be racist against white people. You know why? Because when I grew up in the project, we had, I don't know, here's different in, in California, but in New York City, we had blacks, Puerto Ricans, and Dominicans. There were no Mexicans in my neighborhood, and there were no white people. They're living in good neighborhoods. Okay? And I didn't see a white person until I got to college, I got to high school. I'm not racist at all. But I don't have an agenda. And I don't, I don't see things the way the world sees it. I see things in the eyes of Jesus. I need, I'm here on the earth to advance the kingdom for him because I owe him everything and I owe the world nothing. Amen. With me? That's how we live as Christians, as peculiar people. You know that in China, people are in concentration camps today that they can go home if they renounce Jesus and they prefer to spend 15, 20 years away from their family. Shame on us. 
that we buy into a system and they don't buy into nothing. They sold out for Christ. You know that the, you know that in China, the underground church don't even have Bibles and you got five translations in your house. Okay? The people in China, the underground church in China, they are they learn the whole entire Bible. They memorize it completely and fully. And you don't even know one scripture. But you know drop it like it's hot. Right? Let's be, let's be the best Christians you can be. Right? You're not going to be perfect. Of course not. I'm not going to be. I had some bad days. Real bad days. I can tell you some story. You're like, oof. If, I tell you a story that if I were to die that day, I would not make heaven. I kicked this Muslim's car. I punched his windshield because he cut me off in New York City. Not here. And and I, was, I had this song on, how great is our God. That's my song. That's, you drop that, man, I'm gone. You know, and, I, and then my brother and I used to sing before my brother passed away. And my brother used to sing, you can only imagine. We'll sing that together, my brother and I. My brother was transvestite, homosexual, bisexual, witch doctor, and married me to a regular woman. My brother was all that. And we used to have some crazy fights in Thanksgiving my mom's house. He told me Jesus is homosexual. I fly over the table and kick him in the head. He, punch, he said, the devil got power. He'll punch me, and I punch him. And we go back and forth punching until we got to, or whoever got tired first. And then my mom throws out. Next time, he's giving the same thing. And then my mom said, you come one hour later, you come one hour before. Eat quick. So you're throwing jail. You better <laughs> eat quick. And my mom would throw us out and get the next one in. But you know what? My brother had a heart attack because he did so much cocaine. He was, go, he was supposed to go to the hospital, get surgery. And the Lord said, go talk to your brother about me. I said, I'm not going to go there. He's going to have all those crazy people. And then I'm going to have to get into the karate kid, start kicking people all over the hospital. Because <laughs> they're all going to jump on me. Because when my brother said, get them, they're all going to jump. And these butchers, yeah, that's the size of these women. They were like, Phew. they had, <laughs> they make me look like Gilligan. I said, they're going to beat me down. I don't mind taking a beat down for Jesus. But... <laughs> But not today. <laughs> and, I, and I went. I obeyed God. I walked into the room. It was a normal day. My brother was in the hospital with his wife. I said, I came to talk to you about Jesus. He said, get out of my room. Get out. Get out. I said, no, until you hear what God has to say. I said, look out your window. And he looked, and the upper cross was Carberry Hospital. You go to Carberry Hospital, you ain't coming out. Let Jesus show up. You with me? And the last thing I tell you, my brother, he wept like a baby and his wife. And no, no clapping. I want you to hear the story. He accepted Jesus, right? And then my brother would say to me, I'm doing my Christian party. I'm going to do my Christian party. And I'm going to invite all my friends. I said, what friends? You don't have friends. You're a Christian now. Don't people crazy. He said, now I'm going to invite them all. And I'm going to lock my door and I'm going to put how great is that God. I said, oh, people are going to manifest. They're going to beat you down in your own apartment. I said, you're crazy. He said, I don't care. I take the beating for Jesus. But they're going to hear the word of God. Right? He did my brother saying that, right? My brother left homosexuality. He used to dress like a dry queen and go to gay clubs and sing. He left all that stuff. He left cocaine. He left all that. He got baptized, everything. Then he said, do me bootleg. Do me bootleg CDs. You know? And so I would, I repented, but I did them for a minute. <laughs> I said, we're stealing, man. We can't do bootleg. So we did the bootleg CDs. And, and he had them all lined up. And he called my mother on a Thursday. He said, hey, I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going to help you with the clothes. I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to help you with that. He never showed up. He closed his eyes and went home with the Lord. No party. See? But, what, but this is, see? We had the party anyway. Because we had it at the funeral. I preach. And my mom said, yo, Jehovah's Witnesses are coming. My mom, Jehovah's Witnesses are coming. Preach easy. My mom told me. Preach easy. I said, I can't guarantee you. But I'll preach <laughs> <laughs> so Jehovah's Witnesses in the back. They were like, you know, they were like, the back was full of Jehovah's Witness. Because my mom was Jehovah's Witness. And the back was full of them. And my mom said, please preach easy. D don't, don't, don't hurt nobody preaching. My mom told me, I said, I can't guarantee you, mom, but I'm going to preach. And I preached, so God loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And listen, the, the people came in. And my brother was back here in the, in the coffin thing. He was back there. I think he was just smiling. And they came in. All the people that were supposed to go to his party, I'm talking about even Ellen, Ellen Generous, little Justin Bieber, 
all these people came in. And, I, and I'm not mocking anybody. Dykes, lipstick dykes, regular dykes, butchers, gay, drug dealers, drug users. I mean, the whole thing was full of these people. And I preached the cross, and I preached how much God loved them. They were weeping in their seats. And I said to them, I said, Jesus never did you wrong. The world did. Sin did. But Jesus loves you. He brought you here today. And 18 of those people raised their hand for Christ. The misfit, the rape, molested, broken down, beat up. They looked good on the outside, but they were broken and hurt and crying on the inside. And my brother won 18 people to Jesus Christ that day. Imagine, 18 people came to the Lord that day. You know what they call my mom up? They call my mom and say, I don't know. That guy was saying something, and my heart was just beating. And I don't know why my heart was beating like that, because I wasn't even high. <laughs> it's a whole beady, and and someone pushed my hand up. Someone someone grabbed my hand, and pushed it up, and and, and, and I looked, and there was no one there. So I don't know how my hand went up. It's Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. See, so no one in your family is too far gone. Believe God for everyone in your family. Believe God for everyone in your family. The last thing I say, listen, listen to these words. Listen to these. Last thing I said, we finish with this. Listen, the last thing I said, restrictions restrict your faith. Remember? You know I mean? Confinement will confine you in a box. You'll be Mimo instead of being a great white for God. Boundaries limits God. God has no boundaries. God is boundless. He had no boundaries. If boundaries means you put them in boundaries, your limitations, that's what the devil wants you to think. Limitation, boundaries, restrictions, confinement. Listen to those words. If you live that way, think that way, and believe that way, you'll never see God's best in your life. And that's what the devil knows. I can't beat your God, but if I can use these four things against you, I can just beat them through you. And this is what you need to cut the rope because you come into church, you come into church, but you're coming in chains. When God never put chains on you, he set you free from your chains. So my, my, that's it. I'm, I'm done. That's it. Those, those are the worst. Those are the worst because the devil wants you to go so, the devil wants you to go so far. You see what I'm saying? The enemy wants you to go so far, but he doesn't want you to grow. And we grow old, but we don't grow up spiritually. How many times you meet people and they say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian for 30 years. And you look at them like, whoa. <laughs> when? <laughs> Where? Because they, they, they're fig tree. Why Jesus cursed the fig tree? Why he cursed it? And no. You know why Jesus cursed it? It's not about the fruit. It had an appearance of something. They couldn't produce anything. And we're Christian. We, haven't, we, look like, we, we look like Christian from afar, but from close, we're Christian Dior. Don't say, don't say Dane Bryant's in front of my wife. <laughs> I got to tell you one more story. Where's my phone? Oh, my phone's over. I was in that park, and I finished with this. I had my, my phone over here, and I was in the park casting out devils. The park was packed. And I had some friends in town, pastors from the East Coast. So somehow they hooked up my wife. Bad move. <laughs> so I had my phone in the back pocket because the pastor's wife likes to shop. And somebody ran likes to shop too. <laughs> so my phone was on the back. And it's buzzing. Bzz, bzz, and I'm casting out demons. The park is packed with people. All you hear is, oh, demons coming out. All over the place. So I hear my phone buzzing, buzzing, and I'm not paying attention to him because I'm focused. I'm in the spirit. I, you know, the anointing is on in the spirit, casting out devils, people being free. I'm rejoicing because when you're free, I rejoice, man. You know why I rejoice? Because God told me one day, you remember when you used to do witchcraft to people? And I said, look, I don't do that anymore. He said, I know you don't. He said, but you never saw the side effects, the damage you did to people. Now you see it, that you're working for me. 
And that's why you say, go the extra mile for them. And that's why I pray for everybody. Because I do the extra mile now. Be- not because I owe you anything. Oh God, I'll, I'll go, oh God, nothing. I don't owe God nothing. What I mean to say that, God is telling me, it's your choice to grow the extra mile. Because he's been good to me. I do it. It's not obligated. It's because I love him. I do it for him to go the extra mile. So my phone was buzzing, buzzing. I'm like, what the heck? Maybe it's an emergency. Because it's, it's, it's not stopping from buzzing. And I'm like, what the heck? Let me stop. I stop. I put a demon on hold. I put him on pause. <laughs> and then I looked at my phone. It was her picture. What a, what a Louis Vuitton bag. That's what the heck is this? I can show you the picture. I'm not making it up. What a Louis bag. And what the heck is this? What the heck? And I'm, I started to manifest in the park. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, but I was, what the heck? The anointing lifted. I had to call back the Holy Spirit. You remember that, right? Yeah, say it. No. Say it. Hallelujah. Go ahead. I say, you say hallelujah, I say ouch. So, listen to the words. And I finish. Come. No restrictions. No boundaries. You're not going contaminate, to contaminate my spiritual environment. No confinement. God never called me out of the hell of the pits of hell to put me in a box. I am the Christian that I color outside of the box. There's no boundaries in Christ. And when I mean by that, when we live for him, the true word of God, the true living God, the true Holy Spirit, the true Father, there's no boundaries. I grew up in the projects. God, after that, my father died 33 years old. He got shot in the face for a woman that wasn't even his when he had a good wife home. I don't live in the yesterdays of my demise. I live in the promises of God in his word. The devil can restrict me. I don't worship in shackles. I don't praise God in shackles. I don't praise God or read my Bible in chains. I am free. Because who the son set free, free indeed. You come and you let the devil know, I'm leaving my chains here today. You know what your chains are? You know what your chains are? Your way of thinking. So the man think it, it's always to be. I think big in Christ. I think that he can do all things. And I'm not talking about material things. Because material things, they come and go. I'm talking purpose and destiny. I'm talking the favor of God in my life. You know, I live in Manhattan. I live here. You know, I live in Irvine. I'm like, I'm, I mess up the status over there. I'm Puerto Rican. Everybody else is Asian. True. I walk out the townhouse, they think I cut the grass. I got more Asian people over there. I can do a Bruce Lee movie. Girl, <laughs> come out in Jesus' name. Manifest now. But you see, this is what I'm trying to I make fun. I love making fun. I don't, I don't laugh at you. I laugh with you. This is what I'm trying to say. If I would have put God in the box, I would have stayed in the South Bronx, in the projects. You see what I'm saying? In the projects, in the South Bronx. Five gunshot rap music came from the Bronx. It ain't come from the West Coast, baby. Tupac, East Coast. Biggie, East Coast. All these rappers, and uh, uh, Sugar Hill Gang, you know, they all, they was all New York, baby. You, you caught up with the rap game later. I, we, used to steal, we used to plug the turntables to the light in the street, steal the electricity. We bring the 32 ounce. I'm talking about 32-ounce Pepsi, baby. There was no 40-ounce back then. There was 32-ounce. And we stand in the school. It's all English. You can turn the car on with that or English beer. That thing was pure gas. And we stay out there with the Coke 45. 
Remember that? And they had the turntables, Master Flash, and all these people, LL Cool J. They were on the street hanging out with us. They were hanging out, doing their rap, man. You know, Master Flash, four turntables. Baby, that all came from New York, the Bronx. All that came from there. I was out in the schoolyard, you know, hanging out. Remember? What? And then all you hear, pa 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 pa. Five gunshots in the projects and all that. You see, that was that. If I thought that was my world, and I see outside of that, because you can find the devil wants to confine you to the, to whatever world he thinks you should live in spiritually. I'm talking about. So that's how we become mediocre Christians. Instead of being great greatness in your life, instead of having a, being a great origin in your life, I don't have to be like the other deliverance ministers. They're out there. They're great deliverance ministers. Isaiah, Pagani, you know, uh, 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 Greg Locke. These are great ministers. I mean, they're a little crazy. But they do their thing. I don't have to run their race. I don't have to run in their lane. I just got to compliment them and find common ground to do it together. See, but God's going to do great things in me because I'm believing God for great things in my life. Amen. I'm believing for great things in my life. I ain't going to limit God because I'm not holding the pen of the story. He is. So do, do I write books? To the grace of God. Because I couldn't write an essay. I had an A in gym and an A in lunch. It's true. I would sell lunch tickets like crazy. Remember those days, sell lunch tickets? Sell lunch tickets. You know, lunch was the cafeteria lunch was like worse in prison. So lunch tickets, I was great in baseball. I was so awesome of a pitcher that I walked into a, I remember Lehman College. I walked in to a tryout in Lehman College, and they had a pitcher. His name was Orlando, and Orlando was the number one pitcher for three years for that college. And I, went, I walked in the college. I walked in the grounds. I remember my friend Robert invited me because he used to play second base at the college. And Robert, crazy, I'll tell you one more quick story about Robert. Robert invited me, Dominican kid. Dominican people can play baseball. I don't care what it is. I don't care who it is, but Dominican can be the best baseball players. He came and he said, John, I don't know, man. This is this is college. This is big league stuff. You wanna come and try out? You know, see I said, Yeah, I went. I tried out. I made the team. Check it out. I made the team. And the only reason the college didn't put me in there. I made the team. I knocked out the first ace pitcher that they had for three years in a row. They was going to put him second and put me first on the rotation. That's how good of a pitcher I was. But my GPA, whew. Okay, my GPA will get me into the cafeteria. <laughs> you see, but then when I got saved, I started reading the Bible. And I started believing God for all kinds of things. I said, well, God can do this person. He can do it for me. And if God said this, he can do this for me. And then the witches are coming after me. Oh, they did witchcraft from Cuba, Haiti, Miami, and New York City. They lined up. They threw the best witchcraft. I'm talking about I had Jezebel come into my house, walk in human form, walk around my bed, lay on my bed. The room will go ice cold. I'm talking about ice cold. You, go, you could breathe and the cold will come out. It will go, she will lay in my bed and then she will look over me like this. Look, she will do this over the shoulder all night long. You can feel her breathing on my neck. And then, your eye, and then your blood go cold and your hair stand up. And sometimes they would grab me by the throat and, and you feel like they were choking me. You couldn't say the word Jesus. The words weren't coming out. I went through all that. Through all that. And I remember I hear, I hear the footsteps coming in the hallway into my room. So I would sleep during the day and wait at night to see if I can stay up all night and fight. But I said, God said, he can, he, God said, they said, the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, demons tremble. 30 days of torment, 30 days of torment, 30 days. The Cuban people got together. Matter of fact, the person that did my ceremony that sold my soul to the devil, I got the marks here and the mark in the back. He was Fidel Castro, right hand man in Cuba in witchcraft. So they all came to do witchcraft. We got to kill him. He's going to expose the, the secrets. He's going to expose the arts. And he's going to expose the contracts and the covenants and, and how the devil operates. He's going to expose it all. If you don't kill him. I had a book that was, a, I was the only third person in the whole world that had this book. was demonic symbols. That you take these symbols and you, and you know how to put them into demonic uh, entities. And the entities and the demonic ancient symbols. You turn into witchcraft and demons come out of those symbols. And you put witchcraft on people. I had all that. I had the, I was the, and the last page was torn. 
And I say, listen, you give me the book, but it looks like the, you know how you, you got that little zigzag in between the page and the last. I said, yo, you broke the page. What's going on? He said, no, we know who you are. If we leave the last page, you kill us and you become first. And I laugh. I said, how do you know that? Because I didn't care. And in the end, Jesus showed up and sanctified my life complete and fully. Human bones, nine cemeteries in my house. Number nine has significant in the dark world. I have purchased nine cemeteries of dirt of different cemeteries so I can bring premature death to your house. I took jails, dirt from jails, so I can take the dirt from jails and incarcerate you with the dirt and put you in that same jail that I stole the dirt. I was a monster. But God redeemed me and set me free. And I'm here with you today.